Hi everybody, this is part two of the tutorial series on how to program PIC brand microcontrollers. Today we are going to blink an LED on port B, pin number two. Um, pretty simple stuff. Uh, it's not rocket science. Not yet, but it will be. So, we should get started here. Uh, okay, so um, fire up your web browser in case you haven't gotten a copy already. We need three things here. We need MPLAB version 8. See, we type in MPLAB in Google, we click the first result, and we get MPLAB X. We don't want that. We want to look for MPLAB version 8 right here. It says it's at the bottom of the page, so scroll all the way down. And there it is right there. So click it, download it, install it. Now we need high tech C compiler. So we Google search high tech C compiler. We see HTSoft. We see product downloads. So second link on Google, product downloads. We want the 10, 12, 16 MCU version. All right. Oh, look at that. There's a really expensive version and a really free version. We want the really free version, which is on the right column, far right side of the page. Scroll down. You see this plugin right here at the bottom? I should point this out first. Download this plugin, and um, you're going to go ahead and install it. But you want to download the compiler first and install that first. So go ahead and download the compiler, then afterwards come down here and install the MPLAB IDE plugin. Alright? Alright. So now we got all that taken care of. We're ready to start programming, kind of. So let's open MPLAB. Share violation occurred. Oh, look, we already have a version running. We're going to do a couple of things first. We need to create a new project, and then we need to add the main HT or the main C file, which is where all our program code is going to go. And that's going to be added to our project and through the workspace. So when you open MPLAB, you should get an empty untitled workspace and an empty untitled output box right here. Um, so let's go ahead and make the project. So go up to the menu bar at the top, click Project, click Wizard, click Next, select your device. In the last tutorial, we built a dev board based on a 16FH77A device. That's the one we're going to use here. So make sure you select it from the drop down. All right, click Next. <clears throat> Now it's going to ask us what active tool suite do we want to use. We want to use the High Tech C Universal Tools Tool Suite, which has the High Tech C compiler in it. All right, so make sure you select High Tech Universal Tool Suite. Click Next. Now it's going to ask us where we want to save the file or project to. Me, I am going to save it to the local root directory, and I'm going to name it Test light. And then we're going to name the project test light as well as the directory we put it in so it's easy to find. Remember where this directory is because we're going to need it later. So okay, so now we got a project directory. Click next. Now step four is asking us to add existing files. We don't have any so we're going to skip this. Click next. We get a summary. Okay, everything looks good. We click finish. So now we have a project. Good job. Now we need to add the main C file to the workspace in our project. To do that, you're going to want to click the new file icon on the toolbar up here. Click it and immediately save it. Go to file, save as, and then we're going to go to that project directory I told you to remember. 
and we're going to name this file main.c, and we're going to save it. All right, so it's saved. Now we go back to the workspace. Look, you see it says source header, what is that, library, and a couple other files. We want to add a source file, so we're going to right-click source file. We're going to left-click add files, and we're going to probably be dumped in the project directory that we made earlier, which is good because this is where our main C file is, and this is the source file that we want to add to the workspace, which is added to the project, which is all going to get compiled together in the end. So, click open. There we go. So now we are ready to start programming. Okay, first things first, you should know some C before doing this. You should know the beginning stuff of the C language, like what a variable is, what a function is, declarations, preprocessor uh, includes, uh, you know, things like that. You should know these things before you get started on this, because if not, you're going to have a lot of issues and you're not going to be able to figure out why, and people are going to laugh at you when you ask them for help. So, read a good C manual. Um, there's one on the internet, a big old PDF floating around. I suggest you Google it and find it. So, anyways, let's start by adding our preprocessor includes. Um, basically, we wanted to add a include to the HTC header file, which is a definition for the microcontroller that we're going to use. It's, that's why we had to specify it in the project wizard so we can kind of narrow down which include file we're going to use. And basically in that include file are all the macros and the constants that define the memory addresses of this particular device. So that's why we have to use it because it makes our life easier and we don't have to program in machine language. It's the whole point of using C programming is to avoid lower level programming. So anyways, include the file. Um, we're going to use a delay macro. So in order to do that, we need to define a constant crystal frequency. So to do that, you're going to you know put a define. We'll do a if not define just because it's important that this gets defined, and if it's defined anywhere else in the code, then whoop de doo good job. So, okay. Um, basically, it's called underscore x dull underscore freak, and you want to define it, whoopsie daisy, you want to define x freak you want to define this as the variable of the micro or the variable of the oscillator you're using and this is based basically in decimal so I'm doing four megahertz I'm gonna type in four million decimal that's gonna be our defined for that so the next going to start the main loop. So basically, we're not returning anything, and we're not passing anything, so we can void both of those out. But then, we need to add a while loop, which stops the program from ever reaching the end of the main loop, because if it does, things start going wrong, code starts executing that's not supposed to execute, and you start freaking out and blaming it on me because I didn't warn you. So whenever you're making PIC microcontroller programs, never, ever, ever reach the end of the main entry point. Okie dokie. Because we're not returning to an operating system. Unless you're running an operating system, then it's okay. But we're not. So anyways, now it's time to... We have to tell the port to be an output because initially everything's an input. As soon as you apply power, everything's an input. So to do that, you talk to tri state register B because we're doing this on port B. Tri state register B, and you want to set it equal to zero, which is saying that port B should be an output. So now you can write all the pins on it and it'll actually show up. So 
Now that's done, we want to go ahead and write to port B, pin number 2. We're going to set this high by assigning it a value of 1. This is not the typical way you do this, but for all intents and purposes, is because we're working as beginners here, this is how we're going to do it. We're just going to set this, uh, I guess, macro, we're going to set it equal to 1, which is actually going to set the pin high. If we set it equal to 0, it would set the pin low. So, okay. So now we add a call to the delay macro, so which is a double underscore delay underscore ms. And you have parameters at the end, which is your delay in milliseconds. If you wanted to use microseconds, you would use US instead of MS. So we're doing milliseconds. So we're going to do 500 of them for the on cycle, which is half a second. And then we're going to turn this port pin off by assigning it to zero. And then we're going to delay it again. Oopsie daisy. We're going to delay it again for 700 milliseconds, which is about a quarter of a second. So at least it looks somewhat flashy. <laughs> Get it? Flashy. It's funny, right? Okay. So pretty much we're done here. There's one thing that I should mention, though, is that when you start this, you need to add a configure macro if you're not going to configure the fuses in your um, your burning software. So um, basically, the fuses tell the microcontroller what to do, how to function, um, what it should do if it can function. You know, it's just general housekeeping maintenance stuff and it's important because it has to be in every microcontroller program you write just not always in this form but you will definitely have to configure some registers before you can actually get something useful out of the chips so uh, and pick microcontrollers case it's a nice clean easy macro to remember and you just fill in the um fill in the blanks here so there's three things that I generally turn off, which is low voltage programming, um, also the watchdog timer, also the, um, what you call it? Oh, and set the crystal frequency. It's pretty easy to do. So let's start with the crystal frequency, which usually goes something like FOSC underscore XT for sub megahertz frequencies um, then when you want to put more than one fuse in here you just use all a uh, and your logical and them together which is pretty simple remember instead of space you use an and which is telling the computer basically it's a space and kind of quantizes your um, your um, your values there so Next is the low voltage programming underscore off. So we turn that off to tell the chip that we are going to use a high voltage source to program it. Very important stuff. I'll explain it in another tutorial. And then next we want to do the watchdog timer. We want to turn that off. And if we don't, it's going to cause mayhem too. So we just turn that off. Basically, you have a program that's ready to go. You want to go ahead and save if you haven't. I just did. Um, save your project, actually. So I'll just save it again just so everybody can see. Can't really see out of here. So save project. And compile it. Clicking this black button up here on the toolbar. And boom! Compiles with no errors. And basically, it's going to spit out a hex file in your project directory. So, once that's done, you can take that file, put it inside your pick burner, and burn your chip with it. And there you go. That is the easy way. In less than five lines of code, more or less, how to program a pick microcontroller to flash an LED. 
Also, the LED, like I said before, should be connected. The positive side needs to be connected to pin number 35. And the negative side needs to go to ground. You can add a current limiting resistor if you really want to. I mean, we're only using 5 volts here, so it's not really like you're going to fry anything normally. But, I don't know. Proceed at your own risk. Thank you for watching, and please leave comments, feedback, questions, whatever. Just say hi. All right. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.